Otherwise, the space is completely useless. If anything happens to the vehicle... Sell the Land Rover. Yeah. Actually, no, we didn't. So, we probably spent... Massive inspiration. How do you afford to do it? Alright, heavy day. Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. So in today's video, we are going to be answering your questions that you sent over to us. We put up a question box on our Instagram and we had quite a lot of questions from you about our build that we've just finished up and also our trip to Africa. We didn't want to sit in our living room and just answer some questions. So we've got some jobs around the farm to do. We thought it would be a little bit more interesting to answer them in between doing those jobs and show you a little bit about what we get up to when we're not doing a camper conversion. Yeah, um, two birds, one stone. Yeah, get some jobs done because we do have responsibilities. <laughs> Let's get into it. We've got these quick release brackets which make this process a hell of a lot easier. Okay guys, so question number one is how much did we spend on plywood for our build? We used a mix of 12mm and 9mm ply, just standard ply, kind of the cheapest that we could actually get. And the 9mm boards were around £25 each, the 12mm was around 30 3 of 12 and 1 of 9 For the dividers in our storage and for the shelves in our cabinets, we used just any scraps really that we had in the workshop to try and save money. We probably spent between 100 and £150 on wood, but we tried to do it as cost effectively and on a budget as possible. Question number two for you. Would you have done anything differently on our build? I don't know yet because we haven't had the chance to use it. That is true. So, I don't know, we have to use it and then see. How do we budget for our trips? This Africa trip is the longest trip that we are planning to do or have ever done. And therefore this is the only one that we've actually really budgeted for. And for this trip, I've put together a full breakdown spreadsheet of everything that we will spend money on and worked out based on like the distance we're planning to travel in terms of fuel, campsites, experiences, going to park, days out, you know, that kind of thing on the trip and really just done a breakdown and then added a quarter of what I've allocated on top of that bit of a buffer. Also put a decent amount of money aside for any unforeseen costs. So if anything happens to the vehicle, God forbid anything does happen to the vehicle. It will happen to the vehicle, Charlie. I know, but Are hopefully. You doing one stick at a time? <laughs> yeah, this is helpful. No. Okay. I can't multitask. If you'd be interested in seeing what we've allocated for the trip, then we're more than happy to share that. But obviously everyone, everyone's experience is different. Everyone's trip is different. There's another load of these over there. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna climb the fence and chuck it over. Oh, the lights, the fairy lights. Am I through? I'm 
Harry. Did we consider fitting a gas stove in the build? Fitting a gas stove, as in inside the vehicle? Yeah. Personally, I don't actually really like to cook inside the vehicle unless you have to, because it's such a small space that um, everything can end up just smelling a bit like what you're cooking. We've got a Kadak Safari Chef. It's a portable gas barbecue, single burner. Packs down into a nice bag like that. So we can use that inside if we have to and outside, but I think primarily we'll be outside. Although in the Arctic, we were obviously cooking inside quite a lot, weren't we? Actually, no, we didn't. We cooked inside, like doing pasta and stuff, but actually, generally speaking, we did actually make fires and cook outside in ridiculous temperatures. So we try and cook outside as much as possible. I think I'm going to have to go through the electric fence to get to the next lot, which is fine. Drop that. Okay, another question that we've got is how old are we? So I'm 27 and Harry is 27? Yes. 27. A rough one. Yeah. So the vehicle's going to get into Durban, and we've got some friends around Durban that we're going to hopefully go and see, spend a couple of days with. And the rough idea is, I think from Durban go south, well into Lesotho, which is another little country within South Africa. It's very mountainous, and I've been there before on, on dirt bikes, which was really cool. So I'd like to go back there. From Durban, I think we'll go south down the coast to. Cape Town, because we have some things going on in Cape Town. Yeah. From Cape Town, we'll then go up to the west coast, Namibia. Skeleton coast. Up to the skeleton, the skeleton coast. Yeah. I don't know where we will dip into Botswana, because obviously once you've gone up to the northern coast of Namibia, you kind of have missed the whole of Botswana, yeah. so we'll probably have to come back on ourselves. Yeah. But the nice thing about this trip is we haven't really got any time frame for, for doing it. Spend as much time or as little time as we want in certain places. That also answers another question, which is how long do we plan this trip to take? We don't have a strict, super strict time frame. I mean, visas going into countries does dictate slightly how long we will spend there. And I'm sure once we get going, that will kind of map out time-wise how long we spend in each place. Yeah. But we'll just kind of see how it goes. It may, it may take a year, it may take less than a year. That is the beauty of it. We are lucky to be able to just go with the flow. Yeah, with all the trips we've done so far, it's always, generally we've always traveled in January, which has sort of like been my downtime for work. And therefore we give ourselves four weeks or five weeks sometimes to, to do our trip. But, um, this one, we'll turn it around here. We kind of like put everything else in port. And, and then when we bought the Land Rover and started kitting that out for, for overlanding, our travel style changed oh, yeah. from backpacking and actually doing a lot of stuff on motorbikes. We, yeah. We've spent a lot of time on bikes doing some incredible drives. Yeah.
see what we need to do with that one. How much did our build roughly cost? That's quite a difficult question to answer because we haven't actually added everything up yet, but we did try to do everything on a budget. And by doing everything ourselves, we did save a bit of money. So I think that will have to be a separate video that we will film when we are reunited with our car in South Africa. And we'll give you a tour of the whole thing and then do a breakdown of cost. Yeah. Stay tuned, we'll share way more on that soon. But isn't this an unboxing video? Go on then. I think Lily wants to unbox it. What's in there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Shall I answer the next question then? That's good. I finished my tea, can I have some of yours? All right, what's the next question? I'm ready. What do we do for work in order to fund this trip? <laughs> Lily, can't you see we're busy? Excuse me, we're filming a video. I think she wants some of your donut. Yeah, she can't have it. Can she eat it? Just a little bit. Custard? No, not the custard bit. Well, in a minute, just wait. All right, shush, Lil. Because I, I always said no, there's no way I could do a a year long trip or something because of my business. I've worked too hard at my business to leave it. You're realising that life is too short and you've got to... If you get an opportunity to yeah. do something crazy that you'll look back on when you're older and yeah, I think, I think you should... I think you should consider doing it. Yeah, we're fortunate at this stage in our lives that we don't have a huge amount of responsibilities yet. Yeah, that probably goes back to that first question as well, is how do you afford to do it? We don't have our own yeah. house. We yeah. haven't bought a house yet. We're thinking about buying a house together. Yeah. And we went on a camping trip and we were sat around a fire talking and everyone was talking about their experiences. And I left that trip thinking... I'm definitely not buying a house yet. There's so much more to do yeah. before being tied into a mortgage and I've stopped work yet, um, which has been a really difficult difficult decision. But um, my business was kind of in a place where I could take a break from it and re re-figure out what I was going to do, where I was going to take the business. I felt like I hit a bit of a, a flat spot. I also work for myself, have my own business, so I work in marketing. I'm in a lucky position that I can work remotely, so when we've been away before, I've been able to work while we're on the road, and that's what I intend to do whilst we are away. You're actually gonna, he's gonna be my first employee, right? I'm gonna be her driver. Harry said that he's gonna do some work for me. Mm. No one's ever got the evidence of that because I never said it on camera so what what you're saying is that why you're not saying it now mm. yeah I will continue to work on the road obviously because the money we need to earn a bit of money we have saved we'd yeah. have to come back and go on the dole if you didn't work oh, true <laughs> sell the Land Rover yeah Can there was home? one other question that I was going to ask go you mm. was do we have any tips for people doing a self-build lots of tips yeah i think planning is probably the most it's the most important thing in any in anything what we found is that we tried to like draw up a design and come up with a design um on sketchup we were using we were drawing stuff out and having ideas and throwing ideas around but what helped a lot was when we've been speaking with andy and mh loads about it because they have not long done their build in tango they gave us so much advice and they came down a weekend when we were kind of 
quite early on at the start of our build and just given us tips of things that they thought mm, we wouldn't have done that or you could do this mm. and that was so helpful. We took massive inspiration from their build. Their I mean, build is like it's stunning. In another league isn't it? It is in another league I mean they use laminated boards and things so it's super yeah. super professional we'll put a link in the description really, yeah. for their build you should definitely go and check that out the best thing to do I, I think is also to list out the gear that you are going to be packing obviously, yeah. obviously everyone's everyone's needs and trips and everything is so different and the stuff that we will take and fit in our car is different to what and in MH or any other people doing a build would take. You need to make sure that the storage spaces that you've got fit those dimensions, otherwise the space is completely useless. Yeah, there's no point asking us how big is that cupboard no. for your build because yeah. your gear could be totally different yeah, to ours. definitely, so. and we built the space around our gear. Yeah, we did, totally. Probably as a starting point, designed around our fridge because we knew that our fridge is without doubt going in there. We'll link what fridge it is. It's a Dometic CFX 55 litre one. Mm -hmm. Did I get it right? Yeah, you did. With the ice maker. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that the dimensions and stuff of that and that our build needed to be around that. Dimensions in the back of our Land Rover are not the same as like no every Land other Rover. 110. Yeah, They're if anyone different. knows Land Rovers, you know that so, uh, yeah. each one is different. But if you've just bought a a vehicle that you're going to go and travel in i would say just go and take some basic stuff and just yeah. go and use it and see what you need from your vehicle because what we've done is not going to necessarily be no. right for you what andy and mh did some things weren't going to be quite right for us yeah they have the pop top roof we don't yeah it's all very specific to you and your needs and your vehicle just get the basic bits and pieces of gear that you need like a good sleeping bag cooking equipment and that kind of thing and like Harry said, when we're in the Arctic, I'll put a little video or photo or something of how we had everything set up. We literally just had plastic boxes with our food and things in, some roll-out inflatable mattresses, sleeping bags. You definitely <laughs> don't need to spend a load of money doing no. up a vehicle. It's more about just getting out there and doing definitely. it. Good term travel though, that's why we decided to do this build. Oh yeah, okay, if you're gonna spend a year in it, then yeah, think about mm. how you're gonna use it every day. It's all just about making life on the road as easy as possible, because it's a tiny space mm. in a Land Rover anyway. Yeah, so. it would be a different ball game if we had like a Unimog. Yeah, or a van or something. Maybe one day we'll have a Unimog. Yeah. Okay, I think that's... All the questions. Yeah. Cool. I hope so. you liked this one. It's been obviously a bit different, driving machines yeah. and doing stuff. That's what we get up to when we're not building a camper in the back of the Land Rover. We so. haven't got our car. I know, it's weird not having a Land Rover around. So we have to do other things. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any other questions, then please let us know. Hopefully we've answered some that you'll be interested in hearing the answers to. Mm. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, and see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Bye.